We have finally had our solar battery installed almost 10 months after ordering it and I am very excited. We have an AC connected Give Energy 8.2 kilowatt hour battery with their 3 kilowatt inverter and I'm going to do a whole video about this system and how I have it connected to Home Assistant once I've had a little bit longer to play with it. But this is an ESP Home video so let me set out the scenario for you. The inverter can push out up to 3 kilowatts of power into your home. But let's say you're trying to not draw any power from the grid and rely just on your solar panels and battery instead. If you're in the kitchen and you have the kettle on, how do you know whether you're near the limit of your battery's power output? Would putting the microwave on at the same time take you over that limit and cause you to draw power from the grid? My solution to this problem is a very simple LED traffic light. The idea is that if you're exporting solar or your battery is ticking over keeping your grid draw to a minimum but isn't being pushed too hard then the LED is green. If the load in your home is causing the battery to use most of its output power then the LED turns amber to warn you that turning something else on could cause you to start drawing from the grid and obviously if you are already drawing from the grid the LED turns red. I'm going to dive straight in here and show you the hardware build because it's very easy. Most of the hard work here is in the software. I've used a D1 Mini as the uh, the brains and a super bright 5mm RGB LED. I'll list all the components in the description for you and the main decision you need to make is which sort of LED to go for. You must get a common cathode LED, but after that you can choose between diffused or clear. Uh, so this here is a diffused LED and you can see it's kind of frosted. With a diffused one, the three different colours, red, green and blue obviously, are mixed very nicely and you get a coloured glow from the bulb. But if you go with a clear LED like this, uh, then you can actually project a perfect circle onto your ceiling. This looks really cool as you can see in this photo, but the problem is that unless you want just red, green or blue light, then attempting to use other colours will project multiple overlapping circles like this. And here's the wiring diagram. You can pause the video at this point if you like for a closer look or check out the full article on my website which includes this image and the link will be in the description. And this is my finished little project. I found an old project box I wasn't using anymore, uh, cut a hole in the lid for the LED to poke through and stuck a D1 Mini inside. You can see the USB port there with um, just the one side soldered to a right angled header. I'll just pop it open and show you on the other side. So you can see there's the D1 Mini, there's the angled header and it's all wired up like this. You can see I've used this little LED diffuser, uh, it's like a little Fresnel lens that sticks on it. It just gives the light a bit more of a spread out effect on the ceiling when it's projected. And onto the tricky part, the configuration. I've tried to make this as easy as possible for you to adapt to your situation, but there are some prerequisites that you'll need sorting first. The sensor will need to know your grid import power and the power being discharged from your battery. And both of these must be positive values. So a grid sensor that's negative when importing is no good for this unless you make changes to my code. Once you have those entities in Home Assistant, type their entity names right here. So this is the uh, entity for grid import and this is the entity for battery export. Now you need to define three parameters. The first one defines how many watts you need to be importing from the grid before the LED turns red. I've set this to 100 watts because my battery's inverter attempts to keep grid draw to a minimum, uh, which means it's sitting between 0 and 99 watts most of the time. Next we have to define the maximum export power of your battery. Mine is 3 kilowatts, so I've set this to 3000. Finally, you need to define a threshold above which the LED turns amber. I've set this to 0.7, so when the battery reaches 70% of its 3000 watts of discharge power, we get an amber alert. Just to run you quickly through the rest of the code, there's an output section used to define the pins on the D1 that the LED is connected to. There are a couple of 
Home Assistant sensors uh, to import the grid and the battery power entities from Home Assistant. These are marked as internal, so as they're not shared back out to Home Assistant. There's the RGB light component, uh, which calls a script to set its color whenever it is turned on and the interval component that runs every 15 seconds, checks to see if the light is turned on already, and if it is, call the script to set its color. To explain the logic behind this, you can turn the LED on and off from Home Assistant. If you have turned it off intentionally, you don't want it turning itself back on automatically 15 seconds later. But when you do turn it back on, then it'll immediately check that it's the correct color. And then there's this script component which compares the grid import power to the import threshold we defined at the start of the configuration. If we're over the threshold, then the LED is set to red. Else, if the battery export is greater than the threshold percentage of your battery's maximum power output, it sets it to amber. And finally, by default, it sets it to green for all other scenarios. This works great for me, uh, but I wasn't quite happy with that LED being on all of the time when there's nobody around to see it. I'd made sure that the sensor exposed the LED back to Home Assistant, so I created a new automation. I grouped together motion sensors from our hall, kitchen and dining room as a template binary sensor and used one of my existing automation blueprints to turn on the LED when that group detects motion, but turn it off a few minutes after motion has stopped. I'll put that blueprint code, the associated automation code, plus all of the code for the traffic light sensor on my website. Just follow the link in the description. If you liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.